Let's go to one of our major subjects we have for you this morning. It has to do with the concerns about voter turnout. Now, this is coming on the back of the fact that the renewed conflict in the Boko area has sparked fears of a possible low voter turnout, or probably there may not be voting at all if the situation persists and it's not brought under control. Joseph is still with me in studio. Let's try and uh, make a sense of what exactly has happened, what it has to do with voter turnout since 92, when we vote, when we became uh, a, a nation that wants to go down the path of democracy. So we are looking at what is voter turnout in the first place. Simply put, it's the people who have legally registered and have the right to cast a ballot to elect either a president or a parliamentary candidate. How have the numbers look like since 92? I mean, so it's what it looks like a zigzag, like what we were told in primary school. But if you look at it closely, you see a number of different stories springing up. And so first, an overview of how it looks like. So we see uh, 1992, 50.2% of the registered voters showed up and participated in the election. The number went up to 77.8% in 1996. It dropped 61.7% in 2000. Mm. Went up again in 2004 to 85.1%, dropped to 69.5%. Then it went up again to 795 dropped in 2016 to 69.3%, and it goes up again to 79.5%. Mm. That is what the data looks on its own, as a raw data. But when you do the analysis closely, there are some important years to keep in mind. Right. The first is the fact that whenever there is a high voter turnout, you see it going in favor of the governing party. So first, let's start the from incumbent. The incumbent. Okay. So let's start from 1996. Chairman Rollins is seeking a second term. Our voter turnout goes... up from 50.2% to 77.8% and he wins the general election. So that's the first time we see that turn happen. From there, we go over to 2004, the second term, the voter turnout again goes up from 67.7 to 85.1% and he wins again. Mm -hmm. Then you go over to 2016 where uh, you have, uh, you go over to 2020 actually, 2020. Yes, 2020. 2020. So even before then, for 2012, 2012. so if you look at 2012, uh, John Mahama, Mills Mahama, John Mahama is seeking a second term on behalf of the NDC. It goes up to 79.5% the NDC wins the national elections. Mm. Then for 2020, you see what happens there again. You have Nana Dan Kwakufado seeking a second term. Then it shoots up to 79.5%. Mm. So we see the trend here. When more people show up on the register to vote, you have the situation where the incumbent or the governing party tends to win the national election. Okay. On the other hand, the flip side of that story is the fact that where there is a decline, opposing party tends to also take advantage of the situation. So we see in the year 2000, the NDC, MPP is in opposition, mm -hmm. seeking to come to power, they win the election. You go back to the drop in 2008, you see the drop 69.5%. Again, you have the NDC in opposition, trying to replace John Ajikun Kufo, uh, Professor Mills wins the election. Yeah. Then you come to 2016, now Danko Kufo is seeking to replace John Ramani Mahama, he again wins the election. Okay. So that is one story that this data tells. Okay. But there are other stories that we can also surmise from this particular spread. It's about the fact that for 2020, we compiled a new register. Again, 2012, there was a new register. And 2004 as well, we had a new voters register. So that also raises the question of the credibility of the electoral rule. Because, mind you, our voters register, we are simply compiling the names of people who are registered to vote. Mm. Now, in a couple of years, a lot of people die. There are people who are not around. They relocate and all sorts of things. Yeah. Now, when we, don't, when we do the exhibition, People are now supposed to show up and say that this gentleman has died, so he's mm. no longer on the register. Mm. So we take the person's name off. But because people don't participate in the exhibition, all those names remain mm. on the roll. So what it means is that mathematically, if you are calculating the ratio, it will be those who have shown up over the total registered times 100. Right. So the base denominator still remains big because all those names are on the register on the with road. only few people showing up. So what it means is that the numbers will still be low. It will still be low. And so the argument is made that, well, 2004, we've sanitized the register. So now the register is at least closer to accurate. So that is how come it's gone up. Okay. There are those who again go and say that, look, 2012, 2012. as well, new register, credible, closer to the number, so more people are showing up. Then you go over to 2020 again, new register, they'll say that we are closer to the numbers again, mm. credible, so more people have shown up to cast their ballots. Yes, and it's interesting to also note that those are the, the years that we have the low turnout are years that we have new governments coming in, yeah. like you indicated. So in 2000, that was when John Ajikim Kufo was coming in. And, you know, we probably would have to get some further understanding.
maybe from the electoral commission why is it that whenever we have a new president coming in or a new party forming the new government the next government voter turnout drops mm -hmm. what what informs that why is that the case <laughs> and, and you also tied it into the fact that we have a higher percentage of voter turnout when the current government is seeking re-election yeah. could it be that between the time they were in government and the, the first four years of the administration the voter register seems normal so it's the same one we take into the election could that be what's accounting for it possibly mm -hmm. then to tie it into the boko situation we looked at the upper east region data and what we've done with this particular graph that you have on your screen is we've tried to put the attendance side by side and so the national one is the dark uh, bars that you have then the blue one is uh, that of the upper east region alone alone and if you look at it you just see that they are virtually the same yes. so it tells the same story as well uh, the two issues either it is as a result of the credibility issues around the register or it's generally because of voter apathy at the eight year cycle 10. all right and so if you look at 92 you see 51.5 50.2 the national and upper east region are around the same level mm -hmm. 96 to the same trend you have over there it goes on and on and on and on mm. and we can replicate the same analysis that we did previously to all that is happening here you see that the 10 the 10 so when you are doing the 80 10 in 2000 you see that it will favor the opposition party seeking to come in mm. if you look at 2020 the governing party seeking re-election it's at 79.5 nationally it's at 82.3 right. in the area so if we depend on which of the analysis you want to side with if the normal one about how it favors governing parties or anything to go by, then the opposition in this world will not want people to show up in the election to vote. Because if more people show up, it yeah. means that the NPP may break the eight. If less people show up, it means that the, <laughs> the NPP are likely, likely to, to win, win simply because of voter party and all of that attendance issues. Right. And it's also interesting to note that um, the statistics we've put together is from 1992. So it paints a picture from right when we started voting up until now. And if the eight-year cycle is anything to go by, the NPP technically have had their eight-year tenure. So if the data is anything to go by, and I'm putting this as a caveat, then it means that by extrapolation, the NDC is likely to win the next election. Yeah if this is anything to go yeah. by. But then again, you are the final decider. You the viewer, you the voter, you the registered uh, voter. You are the final decider who leads the, the, the development in the Upper East region around the Boko Enclave where some insecurities have uh, caused the government to place, uh, renew the curfew in that area. It has brought all political activities to a halt and is really, uh, affecting campaigning, etc. When you are uh, uh, there as, a, as a someone who is going to be voting, will the insecurity in the area also influence your decision to vote or not? We've just analyzed the voter turnout and its attendant impact on the elections. Maybe in subsequent shows, we'll try and even dig deeper and find out from you, the individual, what informs your decision to vote either way. And have you changed your mind over time or you are the type that votes for one party all through irrespective of who is on the paper? Details of that and more uh, will be rolled out here as we build up to December 7, 2024. You're still watching Election 360. My name is Martin Etienne Data. I'm here with Joseph Akable. We're trying to crunch the numbers and make sense, help you make sense of them. It's time now, though, for Constituency Watch.